I'm Lee Sheps, and welcome to Up With The Curtain, where on this show, the curtain goes sideways. This is a special edition from Broadway Con, day three, and I am here with Alexandra Silver. So excited to be here. So yesterday you had some awesome power playlists, yeah, and is. this is Angela Lansbury. Yes, yeah, so I am like, I think, you know, among the many things that I am, you know, actor, singer, writer, I am also Angela Lansbury's most vociferous fan. And um, I basically gave uh, what, what I would describe as a doctoral thesis on her stage career as told through Spotify playlist, which is available on all my social platforms should you want to subscribe. Tell me some of the songs that are on this. Well, so, you know, like, classics like It's Today from her, you know, Nelly. Tour de Force of Game. Yes, exactly. Uh, of course, uh, as Nellie Lovett and Sweeney Todd. And then, like, lesser known things like Dear World and Pretty Belle. Bed knobs and broomsticks, Beauty and the Beast, et cetera, et cetera. Like some really, really great things. And the thing that is sort of not sad about it, but you know, it, uh, her theatrical career is actually such a small part of all of the amazing things that she does, from television to cinema. Um, but it was so much fun, and I gave like a little doctoral thesis between each song. So wow, yeah, you were writing the autobiography. Lansbury. I'm not. Um, <laughs> I'm not, but I could. I totally That's could write her biography. Yeah. But you do have your own book. It's called Segway There. Yes. After Anna Tepka because you played um, Seidel, Good on the Roof, and before that you played Huddle. Yes, correct. So when you got the part on Broadway, Seidel, and you had been playing Huddle in West End, you uh -huh. were like, darn, I wanted to be Huddle. You no, know? you know, it was really interesting because I actually had completed the book. So after Anna Tepka kind of follow, not kind of does follow Huddle and her chicks, story. Um, you know, Pritchick is the socialist revolutionary and Hoddle is the middle daughter who sings Far From Whom I Love. Um, it follows them to Siberia and what happens to them there. And, you know, because I had sort of seen that story out, I actually, and I, I had grown up as well, it was interesting to sort of realize and wake up seven years later and go, oh, I'm now sort of in a place emotionally where I'm thinking about marriage and family, my relationship to the world as a woman rather than as a girl. And I was sort of, I, I, I grew up to ideally be suited to play title at that time. Like, it was like, I had told Huddle's story, and now I was ready to tell another one. And so this is the story of after Anateka, they leave, and the story of Huddle and her And, and you went yes. to Siberia. I did. Yes, I did. Incredible. I did. I would travel to Russia, and the majority of my trip was in Siberia. I did a lot of research, met a lot of unbelievable people, saw a lot of unbelievable things. And, you know, believe it or not, it was sort of starkly gorgeous, um, incredible culture, cultural information. And yeah, it, you know, it's interesting, though, how sometimes when, you know, I had such a strong emotional journey with that role and that, sh and that show, and clearly, like, it, the circle got closed by doing it on Broadway in a way that I never anticipated. But sometimes you do need to take, like, a physical geographic journey to, to match an internal one. What I thought was incredible, and I was crying when I was reading some article of you yesterday, oh. because I can relate in a way, is because your father passed away. When yeah. You and my father passed away um, when I was 24. Young. You. Yeah. And so this helped you mourn and grieve. It did. You know, it was exactly. I think one of the things that I hadn't really quite realized was, you know, for, for those of you who don't know, there's a, a very famous scene on the train platform where Huddle, her final words to her father after this beautiful song, our papa, God alone knows when we shall see each other. And I, it was about five years after my father had died that I started rehearsing and playing with Puddle. And I guess I hadn't realized that I tabled my grieving experience, that I hadn't really gotten a chance to say goodbye. And it gave me this shot to do that. And interestingly, and I'm sure you relate to this too, um, another, probably the most endemic father-daughter moment is, you know, being walked down the aisle at your wedding. And interestingly, I sort of couldn't believe that Fiddler gave that to me too when I played Seidel because of course she gets married. So I had this amazing moment where my father got to, I got to dance with my father at my oh wedding. Gosh. So Fiddler's given me a lot, very, very personal, um, very personal experiences that have just given me this chance to, to live another kind of life. How did Sheldon Harnick let you write this book? Well, you know, it's interesting because Sheldon, so Sheldon has always been a huge advocate for me, of me. Uh, he's, he's like the grandfather I never had. Um, and we became very close when I did the production in London. So um, it's interesting. The, the original stories by Shalom Alechem, you know, these short stories sort of told in the tradition of oral tradition, um, which Fiddler on the Roof is based on, uh, those are stories that are in public domain. So they're actually uh, stories that anybody can write about, characters anybody can write about now. And I sort of took on the project um, never really thinking that it would see the light of day, if I'm perfectly honest. But when it finally did see the light of day, I quite interestingly said to Shelton, I was like, just to, you know, 
quote your show back to you. I'm not really asking for your permission. I'm asking for your blessing. Wow. Um, and he really, he gave it to me and in fact wrote the foreword for the book. So couldn't possibly have been more supportive and wonderful. And I think it was magical for him to see that something he made inspired someone so deeply to create something new, you know, to take it to the next generation. So you did huddle, you did sidle. Uh -huh. uh, you're too... You I know, I miss the hat trick of doing do Hava. Hava, I know. Would you do Fiddler again? I would love to play You know, Hava. I'm like gunning for like goal to 2030, the, you know, want maybe try and get it in writing. No, um, um, I definitely, you know, it's funny, I did play gold in high school. <laughs> um, Groves High School, I was 15. But um, no, I would definitely want to return and play gold at some point in, in some kind of production. I think I have a lot to say about it. So, yeah, it's, a, you know, the thing that's so beautiful about a classic like that is that, you know, uh, as you move through your life, you find more and more things to relate to. You know, we relate to the girls when we're young people, we relate to the you know, couple as we're married, being a parent, all these things. It's, a, it's an incredible piece of, of theater. Uh, like, you know, in the, in the canon with Gypsy and Hamlet. Yes. All those. Classic. All right, so it's time for the 11 o'clock number. <gasps> okay, wait. So we're going to play a game with Broadway Rorschach game. I'm going to hold up a playbill. You say whatever comes to your mind when you see it. This sounds great. Right. All right. All right. Uh -huh. Oh, man, I think this is all the first. This is okay. okay. What's that story? That's, a, that's, that's awesome. All right. Mm -hmm. Next one. Um, someone to watch over me. And match them now. And I match. Okay. Yeah. And the last one. Oh. It's a poor town that comes in the town. I love that. Oh I love Avita. It's so fun. Oh my gosh. Alexandra Silver, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thank you.